Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. This is the podcast for December 24th and 25th, 2024. Uh, one podcast uh, for both Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And the texts that we work with are Luke 2, uh, 1 through 14 or 20, um, for Christmas Eve and for Christmas Day, Luke 2, 8 through 20. And of course, we realize that a lot of congregations have their own traditions that you dare not mess with um, and that you might or you may or may not have a Christmas Day service in these days. But let's um, uh, let's just start. What what speaks to each of you, uh, Joy and Catherine, uh, today? this year about these the, the Luke passages? I think for me it's that, uh, and, and I know this is not an original insight, I think it's impossible to have an, an original insight about Luke chapter 2, but for me it's the contrast uh, between, uh, you know, the, the empire and the, the birth of Jesus, right? And uh, our, our commentator uh, does a good job with this too, but you know, in those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered, and then Lys Quirinius was governor of Syria. Uh, and the uh, and then you have, you know, Joseph going to Bethlehem, the city of David called Bethlehem, which is, of course, I mean, the name of David evokes not empire, I would say, certainly royal power, uh, but not in the same... Um, not in the same manner as as the Roman Empire. But then you get the, you know, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Um, this is a, a somewhat imp imperial language, right? A multitude mm -hmm. of the heavenly host uh, that uh, that is... Um, counter to, I think, or in opposition to the empire, the the uh, the Roman Empire, uh, but uh, and says, you know, uh, Caesar is not Lord. Uh, the the Lord is Lord, right? Uh, Jesus is Lord. Eventually, as is said later in the New Testament, uh, and so the uh, the the chorus of angels, the 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 cohort of angels, uh, speaking singing these uh this announcement singing this praise to god uh, and announcing the birth of the savior uh who is the christ the lord the messiah the lord uh is a is a counter image and a and a refutation i guess i would say of the of the roman empire uh and i think it's important um you know however folks are feeling about the change of administrations in the United States, and I know not all of our listeners are from the United States, but uh, there's there's something I think comforting about knowing that God is God and we are not, and God is God, and whoever the president or prime minister or whatever uh, is uh, is not God. So I'm I'm finding comfort in that. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, two things uh, ring out for me. Uh, as as I read this year, um, one is just my storytelling mind uh, pays attention here to verse nine, uh, nineteen, uh, and Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. So there's this circling back to reminding us of Mary, Mary being there, hearing these words, which are just as incredulous as her being told she's going to bear, you know, the son of God or that she's pregnant or that, you know, Aunt Elizabeth is pregnant. But what the storytelling mind does for me here is that she treasures this throughout the life of Jesus. And in some ways, that's exactly why we celebrate Christmas, while we go through this season of Advent and we are remembering what God has done so that when God shows up in our present, we recognize that this is God, that this is not only the God we've known from the past being faithful, but that this is God breaking in 
to breaking in in an extraordinary way to our ordinary existence. And we need, like Mary, to treasure these things. As you began, Catherine, this story, we we know so well, and there's not Mm. much to add new to it. Mm. Um, which which moves me to the second idea, which is uh, uh, looking particularly, um, our reading is the new revised standard version, updated uh, edition, uh, the UE edition. And I appreciate that uh, in uh, verse 7, here in Luke chapter 2, it says, um, uh, they laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the guest room. And if there's something that you want to communicate to your congregation of people who have heard this story time and time again, I know when I was in seminary and prior to that, we love to talk about the hotel being empty (laughs) and the lack of hospitality, Um, you know, but this translation captures the reality of the first century um, Jewish family that for which hospitality was huge. It was their identity. We will see that in the practices of the early church uh, 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 as we read through Acts, Luke's second edition. But uh, this hospitality means that while everyone was there in their hometown to be counted, they made sure Everybody had a bed. They weren't sending people up the road to the hotel because their flight was delayed. But everybody had come home. And so this is not an exclusion passage. This is an inclusion passage of hospitality. They didn't have room, but they made room. And Culturally, we don't understand what it means that they brought the animals in at night. Um, So this is an insulated garage, but it's definitely not a Motel 6. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be even to clarify, there were no hotels or inns. (laughs) And at this time of history in this part of the world, there was no such thing. Most families were expected and they they had some people argue that they had a spare room always i actually don't think that's right but rather the 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 second floor of the building is where people slept at night and i think what it really means and the the word that what used to be translated as in is later translated as upper room where jesus goes to the upper room for the last mm. supper so there's a real right. connection mm. there and so there's no room in the upper room. They've already they're already filled with other guests they've taken in. And that's the point you're making. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the first floor of of the of a standard house in those days was uh, where you'd keep your supplies and the animals would sleep at night. Uh, and so mm-hmm. they made room. You know, yeah, I love that. That's really helpful. I guess uh, I don't know if I have anything particularly new. Just scanning the Greek. Uh, I, I noticed a couple things that were interesting to me uh, that you could play with. And the first word is the word decree from Augustus that went out. Um, and the word in Greek is dogma. Uh, mm. That word does mm. not mean in when Luke is writing, it means a decree from the emperor. Like this is not just a, oh, here's a message. It's a decree, a dogma. Later on, the church took that word dogma and, uh, as it's, it's, it's a doctrine on steroids, I call it, right? There's, <laughs> there's a limited number, and the birth of that, right, the, the incarnation of Jesus is one of the dogmas of the church, mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. most central teaching. So it's, you could play with that, uh, with uh, the, the emperor's dogma versus, you know, the church's dogma and how it plays into the story. That's one thing I had. The other thing that I had is just the uh, the role of praise in verse fourteen that that um, the the multitude is heaven that music carries so much of what Christmas mm-hmm. means and what is it we're doing when we sing these songs um, mm-hmm. I think three things 
Uh, first of all, when we praise God, we give ourselves to God. I, I get that from the Psalm scholar Clint McCann. The second thing we do when we praise God is we give God to the neighbor. I get that from the Psalm scholar Patrick Miller. And the third thing, though, we do is we reorient our lives on earth. Away, as we praise God, we, we, we reorient our lives away from being curved in on ourselves to being straightened out uh, in a different relationship with the neighbor and creation. So that's, uh, that's, that's what I got today. I love it. That's great. You, I, I just wanted to say? add, yeah, I just wanted to add, uh, just because we're in the narrative lectionary and we're, we're drawing connections, uh, just to note uh, that earlier in the year, uh, let's see, it was October 20th, we were in Second Samuel 7, the promise to mm-hmm. David of, uh, you know, this is where David says, I want to build God a house. And God says, you won't build me a house, I'll build you a house, uh, meaning n- not a temple. You know, there's a wordplay, obviously. You won't build a temple, but I'll build you a dynasty. Uh, and, you know, uh, a descendant of yours will sit on uh, your throne forever. This is an obvious connection here to, uh, again, the the angel army's uh, message to the shepherds, do not be afraid, the angel says, because angels are, uh, always say, <laughs> do not be afraid, right? Fear not. Um, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Mashiach, the anointed one, translated in uh, Greek, Christos, uh, the Christ, the Lord. Uh, so here's this uh, fulfillment, this is this reaching back to that promise to David, which had seemed to be, um, you know, null and void uh, uh, once the people were taken into exile and the last Davidic king was taken into exile. Uh, here's here's the promise renewed, right? Here is the Messiah. Here's the anointed one, the Christos, the Lord. Uh, so as you're as you're preaching, uh, this may be another. Uh, I would suggest this would be a, a fruitful line to draw uh, from where we were earlier uh, this year uh, in the fall to where we are now. That that God is faithful. God uh, God gives promises, and God is faithful to those promises, and we see that. Most fully, we believe, as Christians, in that child in the manger, uh, Jesus Christ, the Lord. I Love to Tell the Story is a production of Luther Seminary's Working Preacher. The narrative lectionary was developed at Luther Seminary and has been hosted on Working Preacher since 2011. Find episodes and links at workingpreacher.org slash narrative. And be sure to rate, subscribe, and comment on YouTube. Thanks for joining us.